Wrecking Crew is a 1985 platform puzzle game that was one of the original launch titles for the Nintendo Entertainment System. In the game, you play as Mario, or Luigi if you're player two. The game is not really heavy on story. You're a demolition worker whose job it is to destroy buildings, and each level is complete when you destroy all the breakable walls within it. Again, without much in the way of justification through story, there are magical fireballs, strange-looking monsters, referred to as gotcha wrenches and eggplant men in the manual, and an evil foreman named Spike, trying to stop you from completing your demolition work on each level. There are 100 levels, called phases in the game, to smash through. The game also features a level designer, where you can make your own phase, which is really fun. I wish there were more of that kind of thing back then. Wrecking Crew and Excite Bike are the only two games I can think of that had that feature. Wrecking Crew was designed by Yoshio Sakamoto for release on the Famicom system in Japan, as well as an arcade cabinet. It debuted on those platforms in June of 85, before its US release in October on the NES. The game has been re-released a number of times on other Nintendo platforms, most recently the Wii U's Virtual Console. The arcade version of the game featured head-to-head -head competition between players, between Mario and Luigi, while the Famicom version is pretty much the same as the one for the American NES, with the exception that on the Famicom you were able to save your levels in the level designer. In the US, your level designs were gone as soon as you turned off the power. Yoshio Sakamoto is another one of Nintendo's legendary developers. He goes back to 1982 with Nintendo as an artist, graphic designer, and later a director. When you look at his list of credits, you see things like the original Donkey Kong, Kid Icarus, Balloon Fight, the first five Metroid games, just to name a few. He has a whole lot of amazing creations over a 30 plus year career with them. Wrecking Crew marked the first time he designed a game rather than just doing art for it. Originally, the protagonist of Wrecking Crew had no name. He was just a guy in overalls with a hammer. It was the game's producer, Shingiru Miyamoto. Uh, Miyamoto, by the way, is another titan at Nintendo who made Super Mario Bros., Legend of Zelda, just the list goes on and on. He suggested to Sakamoto that he use Mario. Mario has name recognition and is easy to draw, Miyamoto said to Sakamoto in a meeting. When asked about his inspiration for the game, Sakamoto told Wired interviewers that I wanted to make a game where you broke walls and got sort of a puzzle feel out of it. Other than that, there's nothing I really could put my finger on as far as a specific influence or inspiration. I was just imagining that type of puzzle action game. Sakamoto's level design and Wrecking Crew is way ahead of its time for 1985. It's smart and elegant in a way that games were not for many years to come. Mario has no special abilities, no special items, no melee attack, no screen nuke, no invulnerability, no mushrooms or stars. You can't even jump. You have to think quickly as you avoid enemies, and be careful not to break something which will prevent you from completing the level as you do so. Some of the levels require you to cooperate with the AI, including Spike, the evil foreman. Uh, all this is taught to the player through playing, and that's a characteristic you see in the best games, I believe. Like in Legend of Zelda, you start out with a little shield and a wooden sword. Little by little, the game just keeps adding things into gameplay until you have a whole backpack full of tricks to fight enemies and find secrets with. Wrecking Crew teaches you its mechanics one level at a time, adding techniques that you need to progress. In level 1, you can go in pretty much any direction, avoid the one enemy they start you with, and break the walls in whatever order you want. On level 95, you have 42 seconds, and if you waste one of them, take one step wrong, you die. Some levels emphasize quick reflexes and perfect execution. Others can only be passed by carefully planning your every move. Still others incorporate both elements. That's it's very challenging. Wrecking Crew's music and sound effects were designed by Hirokazu Tanaka, a pioneer in 8-bit music with another incredible list of credits as a sound designer and or composer for Nintendo, as well as a programmer who worked on the Game Boy Camera and the original NES Zapper. He incorporated his love of dub reggae and drum and bass into Wrecking Crew soundtrack. Quote from Tanaka, If you listen to music in Wrecking Crew, you can recognize that some parts are drum and bass only. So that turned out to be an idea for working through the limitations of the game software at the time. I figured that to get the most out of the game music, a dub bass structure would be really great. I'd play the melody in some parts, then cut it off and insert a part with just the drum and bass, and vice versa. No one else was doing it, but it was what I wanted to do at the time. 
The music and the sound effects fit the game so perfectly with its visual style and gameplay. It's one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. This game is always going to be a favorite of mine. It's one of the games I got for my original NES for Christmas when I was nine. I'm glad to see it referenced in games like Smash Brothers and to see it re-released each time Nintendo comes out with a new platform. But Wrecking Crew is definitely a sleeper hit, not one that turns up much on top ten lists on forums or social media. Oddly, the most referenced thing about Wrecking Crew is the Golden Hammer. Before I talk about that, I just want to touch on the Easter eggs that were in Wrecking Crew, the one-up letters and prize bombs, which is another thing the game was many years ahead of its time on. The one-up letters appear when you break certain walls on certain levels in the correct order to spell Mario or Luigi, if you're player two, and the reward is you get an extra life. How do you know where the letters are? You don't. In 1985, there were no guides and no internet to look it up, so you'd have to figure it out by trial and error, since each time you hit a letter in the wrong order, no more letters appear on that level, and you'd have to start over. Prize bombs were also tricky. They worked through a mathematical model where, if you hit the right bomb, you would produce a trophy based on how many swings you had swung, plus the number of the level divided by the number of the level with the remainder dictating what prize you got. Again, trying to figure that out without the internet in 1985 was nuts. But anyway, the, the point was, most of the prizes you got were just animal trophies that you got some points, but one of them was the golden hammer, which gave you the power to smash any wall in one hit, and even knock the monsters down if you timed it just right. The golden hammer is the most enduring part of the Wrecking Crew mythos, turning up as an item, trophy, and musical reference in many games, mostly Mario Jason games. Smash Brothers was the example before. Fun facts! As I alluded to, this is one of the only Mario games we can't jump. Nintendo reportedly has clarified that by saying the reason is that Mario and Luigi's hammers are too heavy, and that's why they can't jump in this game. So that's clever. Uh, while the gotcha wrenches look like monsters or dinosaurs, the game's creators maintain that they were actually animated wrenches, which you can kind of see from their shape. No clue what the eggplant men were supposed to be. Oh. Although I think it's super cool that, as a nod to Sakamoto, his colleague Toru Asawa made a character the following year in Kid Icarus called the Eggplant Wizard. Some people have advanced the theory that Spike is actually Wario in disguise, but there seems to be no support for that from anybody inside Nintendo, so that's uh, just fan fiction, not a real retcon, since Spike was around a decade before Wario. I wish I had more tidbits to share like that, but there's not a lot of details about this game. It really is kind of obscure, which is a shame because it's outstanding. I mean, it's so much fun. I'll uh, include in the description the link to the wiki, where if you want to try and get the prizes and the Mario spelling, um, that helps a whole lot. I played this game on the original NES. It worked a about the same as when I played it on the Retron here, but with the original NES it worked really well. And I know there's emulators out, out there that you can get, and some sequels, some like attempts at like a revival from 1998. But this is the game, this is the one right here, the Wrecking Crew, the one you should do if you're going to play Wrecking Crew. I remember, uh, I guess I'll just add a... So anyway, that's Wrecking Crew. I had a lot of fun playing it and making this documentary, and look forward to playing some more old games in the future. Thanks.